Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Matt Horn is not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. So, how long have you been Ant-Man again? Not long. It just sort of happened. I wish I could fight bad guys like you. I seem to mess it up almost every time. So on the line, we have Langston Fishburne talking to us. From where are you talking to us from, Langston? I, I am calling you guys from New Orleans, Louisiana. Wonderful stuff. Yeah. Is it too early for Mardi Gras? I can never remember. It, it's either too early or too late. Mardi Gras is, well, it's right after Lent, so we're a bit late. So usually, what, February, March-ish? I mean, I've never been. I've never been to New Orleans. I've been told it's very nice. It, it is. It's, it's a lot of fun. There's a, a tremendous amount of culture. The home of Tennessee Williams. How, how could it not be? But, yeah, Mardi Gras is just one small facet of the place. Mm. I mean, you mentioned Tennessee Williams, obviously, who's known for a streetcar named Desire. And also Cat on the Hot Tin Roof. Well, from one animal to another, I suppose, in the fact we've got you here to talk about Ant-Man and the Wasp. Yes, indeed. Mm. Which has been released, it's been released, obviously another, another of the universe, shall I say. People seem to enjoy it. That's promising. <laughs> mm. Now, Langston, I hope you won't mind me doing this, but I think people have probably cottoned on anyway. I noticed quite quickly that you're playing a character, a younger version of a character, who is being played by your dad. Yes. Yes, I am. Who obviously is Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah. He, uh, he played the older Bill Foster, and, you know, one day they uh, discussed as part of the script that they would do a flashback scene. And, you know, Marvel's been doing this thing where they can digitally scan somebody and youth them, as it were. But they still need a physical actor to take the place of who they're doubling. So, you know, the director, Peyton Reed, was talking to my father while they were on set and just threw it out there. It's like, oh, yeah, I want to do this one scene where we flash back and we show you really quickly, you know, 25, 30 years ago. And not thinking of it, my dad offhandedly says, oh, yeah, I know a guy. He can pass for a younger me sometimes. A week passes, and I get a call from my agent saying, yeah, the director has reached out to her. And, you know, it's always a joy to work with my father. We've done, I want to say, two other, no, three other projects together in the past. And, you know, fly in, do a day, hang out with him, uh, do the scene. It was, it was a lot of fun. I'm just having a bit of a think now. Has there ever been a character in film that has been played by both father and son? With father and son, uh, not that I'm aware. <laughs> no, playing the same character. Yeah, I, I, I don't know that it's happened. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. I mean, obviously, you can't give away plotline. I mean, it would be obviously horrible if you did. Being a part of the universe as it is... I mean, obviously you're playing the younger version, but, I mean, could you, in theory, now play, say, a superhero, say somebody who hasn't been seen yet? In, in theory, I still could, because of the way it worked, in that, yes, you see me, you don't actually see my face. It's, it's his face, it's my body. You know, I'm acting with a Lawrence Fishburne mask on, <laughs> so my actual image hasn't been in the universe yet. No. <laughs> it's, it's still possible. 
this interview is getting weird on, on so many aspects. <laughs> so are there any sort of funny anecdotes you can share about the production of the film? You know, my my part was very brief. Uh like I said, I only had the one scene. But, you know, you get down there, it was great going through costuming because my father had already been through the costumes uh, to to shoot. They have him in costume go through the scene and then me in costume try and match him, but passing through and meeting everybody, they're like, going around with this weird sense of deja vu, you know, oh, hey, uh, no, we've met, no, no, we really haven't, it was having that conversation again and again, <laughs> no, you've met my dad, I'm just, I'm dressed exactly like he was at the time, <laughs> and I know that we sound very similar, but no, that was another guy, hi, I'm Langston, I got, I got to do that for a solid day before running into him. And then completely confusing people. It's like, oh, wow, where did you hire this guy? You guys are a good match. Have you been, like, impersonating him for years? And my response is always unintentionally, I suppose. <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to get on with my day. I, I know we look alike. None of this is helping. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was day one on set for me. <laughs> day two was... You know, being thrown into a nice so that they could scan my body into the computers. I suppose saying that then, obviously your dad's been a staple in the 90s. He was quite big in the 90s. Um, with that kind of technology in the 90s compared to what we've got now, that's a big transition. It's a huge transition. Yeah. Now it's become so much more sophisticated. It's, it's leaps and bounds. When they were doing the earlier Matrix movies... I think the most advanced thing out was the, the infancy of the motion capture suit and, and unit. Uh, and, you know, you get like 12 cameras and the ping pong balls on a green suit. But that that resolution is so low in comparison now. It's, it's astounding. Well, let's talk a bit about you, Langston. You yourself. Now, obviously, this is the part of the podcast where I usually say to people... What made you want to get into acting in the first place? <laughs> right. Well, I did not want to be an actor. Really? So, we'll start there. Yeah, uh, when, I, oof, when I was a kid, uh, I had zero interest. It was, it was one of those things, you go out, oh, so you're going to be an actor like your dad? No, thank you. Acting is for crazy people. This was always my response. come back to bite me. Um, yeah, I, uh, I was a dancer for 12 years, classical and modern ballet. Uh, and as you age, you realize, hey, I, I need an actual secondary career since you can't dance forever. <laughs> if, if you're lucky, you don't get injured and you get out while you can still all your joints, uh, but I didn't want to give up performing, so acting was the transition, despite my former protests. Can I just say, I don't usually watch acting reels, but I, I thought I might watch yours, mm -hmm. and obviously you've mentioned yourself, you do sound quite a lot like your dad, <laughs> but uh, one of the acting roles I saw, there was a woman in a restaurant, I think, and... Um, the ballet choreography that you did was just yes. outstanding. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, that was a web series I did. Um, it was actually one of the first YouTube-sponsored web series called Wigs, directed by John Abnett. And, yeah, we're doing a speed dating thing. I came in, he had this idea in mind to have a dancer in this scene and start dancing, and, uh, you know... He's like, okay, I want you to get from point A to point B, but you do it and make it look good. And he let me choreograph the whole thing, <laughs> not just dance it, which was fun. Well, we we have a sort of a common thing, actually, would you believe? Oh. Mm. Uh, we both turned 30 this year. Very nice. Mm. But you were, you were quicker. <laughs> well, I try to be. <laughs> So a thing that we're doing with this podcast, 
uh, we've been doing it for a couple of podcasts now, is actors giving advice to me about turning 30. Oh, right. So, I'm going to reverse the question against yourself and say, what key advice would you give to people turning 30? Was it a panic when you when you got to thirty? It was with me. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. I uh, I I was just working that day and almost completely forgot about it until somebody's like, "Hey, happy birthday!" And I was like, "Oh yeah, it's my birthday. This is awesome. Thanks." When was yours? Mine was June the sixth, which I thought was relatively okay. I mean, I know yours is in it's February, isn't it? I think it's one. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm one of those weird ones. <laughs> <laughs> well. Obviously, I've I've been talking about the '90s recently, and I feel that this is this is actually worth mentioning because obviously, given the family link, I'm going to shock you, Langston, because obviously when 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 it happened, when it was released, we would have been about nine, ten ish, maybe, and uh, I'm sort sort of fighting to say this. I sort of had a look and I thought, no, it can't be. Next year, yeah. <laughs> next year. Is the twentieth anniversary of the Matrix? Yes, it is. I, I swear, it was just like maybe six years ago, right? Yeah. <laughs> time, time flies. It still stands up as a good film. It still stands up as a, a testament to the nineties and now. With regards to that, because obviously I do have to follow this up, I mean, there's been talks of a reboot for some time, we're talking years, but if they ever did a reboot or a prequel, do you think they may sort of come to you and say, we'd like you to play the younger Morpheus or potentially Morpheus' son? Langston, we know it can be done because obviously they did that Han Solo film. Yeah, they, they eventually did with Han Solo. Mm. Though that took, you know, 30 some odd years. <laughs> so, you know, we're close for the Matrix. Another another decade, they might get it. Because I'm sort of thinking now, if they do do a prequel and they choose you, then they're probably going to have to state that Morpheus did ballet. <laughs> Swan Lake. Da, da, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they do say that ballet is a kind of theatre, don't they? They say it's a sort of an expression, a, you know, a way of movement. It very much is. Uh, there's a lot of storytelling and a type of acting that you learn when you do it. A lot of the bigger ballets that people are aware of, so your Swan Lake, your Nutcracker, what have you, there's a story that's part of the show. Have to communicate without words. Yeah. 
hey, this is the story of some little girl who gets a doll and then it breaks, and so she has a dream, and there are rats. It's it's all very bizarre. I'm obviously contractually obliged to ask you this question. You've you've got a career, you've got a very good film career, shall I say, uh, and TV career for that matter. Uh, which actors and actresses have been your favourites to work with, and why? Going forward, in the future, who would you like to work with? Uh, Michael B. Jordan would be a guy that I'd love to work with. He's He's got such a staggering command of screen, and he's, you know, in the Marvel Universe as Killmonger for Black Panther, but everything he does, he commits to it. And, you know, I've been a fan of his since Hardball came out. Found about it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, in in that area, <laughs> it'd be wonderful to even be in a scene with Meryl Streep. <laughs> yeah, just on camera with her, I'd be happy. <laughs> well, I'm gonna give you a one-minute plug. Okay, it's to plug Ant Man and the Wasp, starting from now. Here's a question to sort of long it up a bit. Um, yeah. Obviously, your dad plays Bill. Do you think he got snapped? I think he might have gotten snapped. I, I think he did. I think, you know, Paul Rudd's the only one left. Maybe. Nobody knows. Nobody knows? No one knows, man. Oh. I'm excited. We've got to wait till next year. <laughs> it's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll wait until next year when they call you back again. <laughs> Right, Langston, I do have a final question. Of course. Yeah, now, I, I do have to say, obviously I do love doing these podcasts, and I managed to get away with it last time, because I interviewed Nicolas Cage's brother. So, Langston Fishburne, what is your favourite Lawrence Fishburne film? That's easy. <laughs> Once in a life. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why? Yeah. bit like the never-ending story in a way in a way not anywhere as wholesome as that <laughs> or the princess bride princess bride's another yeah. one yeah yeah it's 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 about brothers and drugs <laughs> so not not your princess bride but still a very adult bedtime story mm. well i'll share mine i would have gone with it was either a toss-up actually, Langston. Yeah, 
Matrix obviously was going to be the the one. Right. Pun intended. Or it was going to be Event Horizon. And there's talks of a remake, Langston. What? Uh, well, I mean, Event Horizon was a remake to begin with, it's fine. Was it? <laughs> yeah, it's a, a remake of a 1970s Russian film called Solaris, which then got remade again with George Clooney in around the early 2000s. But yeah, that that is what that story is. The haunted house in space. I like Event Horizon a lot better. So did I. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's it. Well, Langston, it's been a pleasure interviewing you. Thank you, man. This has been a joy. Mm, We'll have to get you back. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.